Hi there, my name is Dr. Andrew Getty. I'm an Oldfield obstetrician gynecologist and I've been working in this wonderful community for 18 years now. I was asked to um, share some of my Mother's Day tips and I wanted to start by um, wishing everyone a happy Mother's Day. Those who are soon to be mothers, those who've been mothers for a long time, grandmothers and stepmothers and aunts and anyone who's ever mothered a child. So happy Mother's Day. And uh, that's a pretty big challenge because there is so much um, information out there and so much advice that we can offer. So I decided to break it up into before you want to have a baby, what's the best thing you can do to start and, and what's the best platform you can start on. I actually surveyed a lot of the nurses and asked around, what, what would you tell a new mom? And everyone pretty much says the same thing, which is be the best that you can be. Start off with the healthiest place you can be in and work forward from there. Use it as a challenge to improve your health um, with exercise and diet and to really just um, sharpen uh, how you live your life and make it just a bit uh, healthier if you can. Some of the things we look at doing are prenatal vitamins and just to remind everyone that you should be on a prenatal vitamin for at least three months before you conceive your baby. Again, the idea is, is you want a good head start. You want those vitamins in your circulation before you conceive to give your baby the best chance possible. Your doctor may advise you to go to a different dose of prenatal vitamin, specifically the folic acid component. If you have time and you're in that situation, ask your doctor about what dose of folic acid you should be on. Other things you might want to look at are what medications you're currently taking. Some of those things may increase the risk to your baby, so if you can avoid them, that may be something you wish to consider. Of course, smoking is always an issue we talk about. There are some rumors out there that quitting smoking while pregnant is in fact more stressful to your baby, and that's just simply not true. If you can quit smoking, that's the best advice we can give anyone in a pregnancy. Exercise is really important as well. When patients come for their first appointment, we often tell them to continue doing the exercise they were doing. If they hadn't been doing any exercise, we still encourage it. I think you should try start slow, however, and work your way up. You always want to keep your heart rate in the normal range based on your age, and you can receive that information from your doctor. Another key thing you may want to speak to your doctor or healthcare practitioner about is immunizations. We all want women to be immunized to rubella or German measles before they conceive because that's not one of the vaccines you want to acquire while pregnant. The other important vaccine is influenza vaccine. A lot of women are afraid to take the influenza vaccine during pregnancy, but we know that's the only way you can confer protection to your baby in the first 6 to 12 months. So that influenza needle, that you, vaccination that you get, not only does it help you, but it gives your baby an incredible head start and benefit because we can immunize newborn babies within the first two months. Other things to think about is travel. If you're going to book a trip while you're pregnant, you want to make sure it's somewhere safe and that you have travel insurance. Uh, as well, you want to, again, check with your healthcare practitioner that it's safe for you to travel before you book a trip away. One piece of advice I often give my patients is to really arm yourself with the best advice if you're going to go to the internet. Please make sure those sources are credible, well studied, and respected. Two great ones that I often recommend to my patients is one from Mother Risk, which is a scientific-based, study-based um, group of, of researchers through the Hospital for Sick Children whose mission is only to make the outcome of your baby the best as possible. That information is safe, reliable, and credible. Another great source is one called the SOGC, or the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada. They again will give you only credible, evidence-based guidance on how to achieve the best for you and your baby. During your pregnancy, you'll meet all kinds of people who want to give you the best advice they can. Sometimes that advice can be ill-advised. My advice to my patients is be respectful to, to patients' stories and experiences, but if they're going to offer you a negative experience, ask them to reserve that story till after your baby is born. Surround yourself only with the most positive information and positive stories so that you'll have a happy and worry-free, if possible, pregnancy. Finally, congratulations again to all mums-to-be and all current mums. For the mums-to-me, we hope to see you at uh, the new hospital in December of 2015 or here at our current facility 
where we will continue to provide you with the best care we can with the greatest nurses and healthcare staff available.